<laughs> that was my first television appearance. Yeah. Ah, that is me with my little brother in matching pajamas. And I have made a television, it looks like, out of a diaper box. You know, it's funny, I was a very shy kid. I never w wanted to be an actor when I was a kid. I wanted to be an athlete. It wasn't until about 13, 14 that I really fell in love with acting. I mean, I was always shy. Like for me, stage was the safest place in the world. I never really, I was not one of those extroverted kids who was always up in kind of the center of the attention in a room. The only place I felt comfortable being the center of attention was on stage. I always felt like a weird kid. I always felt like I had ideas and perspectives and takes on things that were just completely not shared by most people around me. So, I don't know, if I, if I could say one thing to that kid, I would say, hey, it's okay, your weirdness is gonna be your biggest superpower, so just hold tight. Ah, that is the production of Shenandoah at the Goodspeed Opera House that I did when I was 17 years old. That was my second professional stage job. It was a big triumph to book that production because I, <laughs> I had to sing, I had to dance a little bit. That was like the best summer of my life. I got to do professional theater. I got paid. I think I got paid $365 a week to do eight shows a week. And that seemed like more money than I could ever spend in my lifetime. I booked my first ever feature film while doing that production, which is called Angus. I'm pleased to announce that this year's freshman winter ball queen will be <laughs> Melissa LaFever. Yeah! People are going to tell you Angus is going to change your life. It's not. The movie's going to bomb. Nobody's going to see it. <laughs> but it's okay. You'll be okay. Just keep doing what you're doing, I think is, is what I would say to the, to the kid in that photo. Trust your instincts. Because really, I mean, the talent is in the choices. Choices are all you got. So, so trust, trust your heart and, and go with your gut. And my first Emmy Awards. Look at that. I don't know if I made the best choice wardrobe-wise. I, as I recall, Joan Rivers put me on the worst dress list that year. Yeah, she said I looked like I was going to church. Wow, that was that was the that was when life was at its uh, at its craziest. Well, at 20 years old, I got stupidly lucky and found myself uh, in a zeitgeist cultural phenomenon TV show, and I was suddenly famous. I just don't think it's a good idea for me to sleep over anymore. Come well, on, you've been sleeping over since you were seven. It's Saturday night. Things change, Dawson. Evolve. What are you talking about? My, my reaction to fame was to run away from it, was to hide. But back then, it was really intimidating. I didn't know what to do with fame. I didn't know what to do with recognizability. I didn't know what to do with success. But if I could say one thing to the kid in that photo, it would be just relax. Be grateful, enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. Don't try to figure it out in your head. Just recognize that you're able to make people very happy by doing something very simple. I was 21 years old. My first lead role in a movie. And it was a movie I really, really cared about. It was a role I really cared about. It was a role I really had to fight for. I had to fight for that role. Nobody wanted me for that role initially. So I went into that experience with a chip on my shoulder and John got there. This is a two-time Oscar-winning actor, a legend. John um, was and is a mentor. He and I can disagree on, on many things, but he's always been there for me. He didn't coddle me at all. In fact, he would kind of mess with me a little bit. We kill ourselves for you. You round, we play hurt, we play sick, and we spend most of that time scared that we're gonna screw up and you're gonna kick our ass because you don't really give a fuck about us. At the end of the movie, I'm giving a speech in a locker room to, to him, and I come in through the door, and I was saying this thing to him, and it was sounding a little bit speechy. And John, in the middle of it, while cameras are rolling, turns around and goes, oh, and just closes the door in my face. 
and I immediately slam the door open with my fist and I keep on going. And they all cut and John turns to me and goes, that was good, do that. And I realized he was helping me. He was throwing me an assist. He saw that it was sounding speechy and he decided to close the door on my face to give me a really active action to keep it from sounding like a speech. And I was like, that's the kind of actor I want to be, who not only knows what he's supposed to do, but can look around and help out everybody and make the whole production better. <laughs> that's my crew. There we are, just acting normal. When you're, when you're younger, you think about yourself quite a bit. And your thinking doesn't really extend, at least mine didn't really extend too far beyond my own needs. Um, but then you have kids, and especially daughters, and you start looking at the world from a whole different perspective and things that you never thought about before. My favorite thing about my kids is just how they give you license to just be crazy and have fun and really and be as weird as I felt as a kid but never felt I had permission to be.